Welcome back to the Forensics Detailing channel. Before we get started, don't forget to join us on at Forensics Detailing on Instagram, where you can share my discussions and thoughts on detailing stuff and see my cars. Um, and we talk about products and all that sort of stuff. In this video, I want to talk about what products, what's the best product for protecting my car, John? What should I, what should I use to put on my car? Now, if you're new to detailing, the first misconception is you'll think the most important thing, <laughs> there comes the hand, in how your car is maintained is the protection product. But it's probably the least most important thing. The most important thing really is how often you wash it. Do you have a garage or not? Because it makes a big difference having a garage. If it's outside, it gets dirty after a couple of days in some conditions. Um, how often you decontaminate the paintwork and how often you use the car. Um, When's the last time you machine polished it? And how you wash it, essentially, is really important. Now, these products make, um, they form a barrier between your paintwork and all of the stuff that falls on your car, like water with minerals in it, like uh, pollen, like dust, like cement, like iron fallout, uh, like bugs and splatter. And they make all of those dirts and contamination a little bit more difficult to stick and embed to the paintwork. Okay, that's that's one different. That's what they do, um, and obviously these products last a different amount of time. And the other thing that's important is they're all made with different materials and different formulations. And what are the differences between those, and are there any more benefits to the modern materials versus the old materials? The short answer is yes, but those differences are very very subtle. Um, a lot of times you might think that the most modern um, car protection products offer you the highest gloss, the the best protection and all this sort of stuff, um, where the case might be that the, just the materials that you use last longer on the car and stuff like that. So I'm just giving you some examples. So what are the different formats? Well, first of all, you have the paste wax, traditional paste waxes, where you take an organic wax like Carnuba, which is a plant, resin that comes off a carnauba plant i can't remember the name of <laughs> grown in brazil and you melt down that resin and you mix in with it some other materials and solvents to make it all soft and you spread that resin over your car the solvent disappears and hardens and leaves a layer and you buff it and that leaves wax on your car now modern day waxes like this built hammer double speed have other things blended into them, other materials, so that they can reinforce the wax. Um, they can add hydrophobicity, like hydrophobic polymers in it and stuff like that, so it can bead more and make the car easier to dry. So there are very few old school, what I call organic waxes, like, like kind of this Zymal Glaceur, which is an old school that's a lovely wax, but it's kind of an oil and wax rather than all this modern kind of ingredients. So the difference between a modern wax and an older one is that if you don't use oils, organic oils, in the mix, then the wax will generally resist detergents a bit more and last a bit longer. So these modern waxes can do up to three to six months, um, whereas those organic waxes tend to last, you know, couple of washes you can really strip them off the car with a strong alkaline wash um, now what are the disadvantages of paste wax one it's a pain to wash your car polish your car and then go over the entire car with a wax and wait for it to dry and buff it it's a lot of lot of elbow grease um, so that they can be timely to apply that's one of the downsides with them they also they're not too friendly to apply via machine because they're a bit too thick and they don't spread that well typically so a, a liquid paste wax with water in it is more suitable for use use by machine some softer paste waxes you can just to get about get away with spreading on a, on a soft pad and spreading over a car but i wouldn't generally advise you apply paste waxes by machine and most of them don't so that's one of the big disadvantages Another disadvantage is with anything with wax in it is that wax, paste waxes, even modern formulation ones, when you put them on the car, the next time you wash them, 
the surface of the car can sometimes become sticky as you degrade the wax. You might notice that and then you go to put like a detail spray on it and it feels a bit like the microfiber sticking to the paintwork a little bit. That depends on the product, but that, that can be a disadvantage of waxes. Um, so that's something to consider as well. Um, historically, waxes don't last as long as some of the um, modern sealant type products, especially even liquid products now, which you can get, you know, like this one, for example, might outdo lots of old paste waxes. Um, so that's the other thing. There are exceptions to the rules where if you look at this Fuso wax, which is probably, well, it is a wax. It, 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 it has paraffin wax in it and it even has a small amount of carnauba. Um, but this you could think of as a modern day um, hybrid wax, which has got synthetic fluoropolymers in it and solvents as well. And it's capable of, it would probably last me 12 months if your cars are garaged, you know, um, which is incredible. So if you're looking for durability, something like the old version, if you can still get out of it, or the Fuso wax is a really cool product. So we've therefore covered wax. You can call that sealant if you want. Uh, you've got, and you've got things like this new Geon wax, which I'm a big fan of, just because it's so nice to work with. You could probably get away with spreading that on that machine. Right, so let's move on to sealants now and what the advantages of sealants are well if we go over to something like this paste wax this is an example of a sealant as well really because this is synthetic so it's really a type of sealant um, that's not using natural waxes it's using waxes which don't melt so you can still get waxes which fall into the sealant category or you can get a modern day water-based sealant like this well again this is a sealant hydrophobic wax so this probably also contains some some waxes as well but it also contains synthetic ingredients probably siloxanes which are modern forms of um modern forms of the silicon family if you like modified forms of silicon or even though siloxanes are their own category that um that are held in water and bond to the paintwork. There are other formats of synthetic sealants, like acrylic ones, which are dissolved acrylic resins that you can spread over and the solvent, solvent vapes out and it leaves a layer of acrylic sealant over the paintwork. Those tend to have gone out, a little bit out of favour now because acrylic isn't hydrophobic, so it's hard to know if your product's still there or not. Um, what other ones? Silicon polymer. So you can get silicon polymers um, you know, forms of silicon which will dry again and bond onto the paintwork um, in a solvent-based product. Um, that's the main forms of sealant that I'm aware of. Uh, there's probably other ones that I'm missing off the top of my head because there's so many, but mainly siloxanes, silicon polymers, acrylic polymers would be most of the and, and synthetic forms of wax you could you could argue are sealants as well what are the advantages with all of those things they tend if they don't contain organic waxes they tend to have a bit more detergent resistance and that's why they're used um, and they might be water-based as well which is an advantage over a solvent-based wax that you're rubbing in with your hands sometimes you know you know mineral spirits and stuff like that so that's the next thing Another thing we need to talk about is emulsions. So here you have the Adams buttery wax, which is wax and emulsifiers. Emulsifiers allow you to add water. So you could, um, you typically if you add wax and water together, the two products won't mix, but you put an emulsifier there and it will form like a, a sludgy emulsion. And that allows you to spread very easily because of the water in there, the product's lighter and it buffs a lot easier. Um, it's just a bit easier to use. The disadvantage is if you put an emulsifier in, the wax is less impervious to water, so it will it lowers durability, typically. Other types of protection products, which I'm a big fan of, are all-in-ones like this Meguiar's 3-in-1 wax and Auto Finesse Triple, which are abrasives, so very fine abrasives that you can control how much cut by pad you use and how long you work them 
with a mixed in form of wax or synthetic sealant. So these are like a one stop shop. Hit your car, put the protection down in one go. And other forms of protection products which have come really popular are the SiO2 sprays like this Meguiar's Hybrid Ceramic Wax, which I think is supposed to have wax in it and SiO2, um, you know, SiO2 silicon dioxide technology. Well, SiO2 became very popular probably about 10 years ago, or popular about five years ago, really popular about five years ago. That's when it hit. But it was around a long time before then. When it hit, um, especially with these water-based versions of it, there was a lot of cynicism towards it, that it was just a fad, um, you know, but they've become very popular and everyone tends to use SiO2 sprays. For some of the reasons I've talked about, because it's water-based, almost like a detail spray with some of them, you can spray them on, spread them, buff them very quickly. Um, and the advantage is perhaps next week or when, whenever you wash your car again, you don't get that stickiness with them. And the buff is really nice and smooth and the paintwork feels really nice and smooth. That's the advantage of them. The disadvantage is you can't reset your paintwork. So if you keep putting layer upon layer every two weeks of SiO2 product, if you, if you were doing it on something other than your paintwork and it was just your glass, a piece of glass, and you're putting on product and product, <laughs> you're effectively layering up so much material. You can sometimes get filming. <laughs> it's a good example of filming there, although this is moisture. Um, so sometimes if you overuse those products, you can get filming and you see it sometimes in the sunlight, a little dulling and distortion where you've got, you've kind of like put excess product on. I've seen it anyway. So the, the good thing with these products that you use on machine, you reset your paintwork, even the buttery wax, it will scrub the paintwork, you know, even without abrasives in it. It might, it might have some abrasives in it, I don't, I don't know. But this will still like reset and strip off whatever's on there when you use it on machine, as long as it's not something like a coating. Reset your paintwork and put a fresh layer of wax on. And I find that tends to be the way to get the real clearest finish on your car. You really notice it with this black car. So I'm a big fan of sort of these products. Now, these don't have durability. So some people, when I talk about these products, and the fact I like them, other people are like, it's rubbish, it only lasts a month. Or like, yes, but it's not really... It's... It's if you really want to keep your car looking nice. I think that's just the best way to do it. And for me, the durability isn't a big issue because, you know, the cars are always in the garage and stuff like that. So for other people, they've got different requirements. So some professional detailers want to put something down that they know is going to be on their customer's car for the next six months and stuff like that. So this is why this discussion is really important because it's all about what you want. So these, are, these hybrid ceramic SO2 sprays are pretty decent. Not too many disadvantages. And then you get variants of them, like this 303 graphene nano spray product, which claims up to 12 months protection. It's quite a durable product, you know. So there's all this choice there. And then finally, <coughs> anything that comes in a glass bottle, typically, although there are some ceramic coatings advertised in, in glass bottles that are water-based things, that's a bit sneaky, so be careful. Typically, the glass bottle ceramic coatings, the true ceramic coatings, like this um, Synchro, this uh, Geon Synchro uh, Revolution version, which is coming soon to market, um, the true ceramic coatings use a variety of now of speciality resins um, that set very, very hard, form, you know a really hard but flexible layer of a speciality resin on your paintwork and these resins are you know they're not all the same now you know they all these coatings have all got little differences and they blend other resins organic resins in with the inorganic resins to make a little cocktail of resins <laughs> that can give you extra hydrophobicity and extra gloss and can help against water spotting and the coating evolution and development is is ongoing with all of the products, you know, kind of claiming latest and greatest advantages over each other, stuff like that, which which is true, you know. 
the problem is most coatings are fundamentally decent, aren't they? Apart from the, the real cheap one quid Chinese ones. Um, so really the advantage of using a ceramic coating, and this is a multi-layer ceramic coating, is that you're going to be putting down materials which definitely will stay on your car for a long time. Um, and the disadvantage of that is you can't reset your paintwork, scrub through them, you know, like with these AOIs and waxes. Once you commit to a ceramic coating, you should maintain it properly. However, that manufacturer recommends you maintain it <laughs> with the only exception being that there are a couple of um, ceramic primer products, one by CarPro, I think CarPro is it? CarPro, I can't remember what it's called, um, where you can you can polish on top of a coating and it'll add more resins that will harden off. Or you can top up your coatings with more top coats like this skin or a, a lightweight coating like Tac Moonlight or Gion, Gion Can Coat and stuff like that. So you can build up more protection with coatings. Um, coatings generally, you know, I'm not going to be using them because well because i'm always pampering my cars um if i had a car that was living outside like the, like the golf that i really refused to clean then that would probably be a better candidate for this but i don't care the paint works not good enough so if i had a a nice family car like a nice bmw 3 series f f81 uh, you know a tourer f 340i tourer just dreaming um, that would be an ideal car to coat for me and then I would I could put a coating on I could put a three or four year coating on just wash the car you know once every couple of months and cover it cover it in wet coat or something that's just easy so the coating might actually make my life easier that's what coatings typically do um, you know and again when coatings first come out they were there was a lot of scepticism around them, but, but all they are is materials which are harder to apply, more tricky to apply, um, but last longer. Um, and might offer you a little bit more dirt repellency, which is important, that dirt release quality that they have. That's, a, that's not a myth either. That They weren't originally designed for going on cars. They were designed for like anti-graffiti applications on train carriages and building facades and stuff like that skyscrapers you could put them on glass to make the glass easier to clean all that sort of stuff then they discovered you could put them on car paintwork as well the disadvantage of ceramic coatings is they're quite expensive and they're essentially a one-shot thing because they go off after sort of six months of opening the bottle so um they are relatively expensive they are also you need the right environment you know a temperature controlled environment humidity controlled environment because if it's freezing cold and moist, if I tried to install it on this car today, I'd have it would be different to installing it in the middle of summer on a dry, nice, warm day. So they behave differently and they have limits. Um, and they're very easy to, if you haven't got the right light, to put patches and little smears that you won't always see unless you suddenly get the right light on them. So if you install them incorrectly and you don't prep the car properly, um, you they are very difficult to remove. To get it, if you put it everywhere, on every bit of the paintwork, all the way down here, you know, every little bit, to get to then get it all off is very, very difficult. But, um, you know, that's another discussion. I get asked that quite a lot. How do you remove a ceramic coating with great difficulty? Because you don't, you can't see if it's there or not. So you have to kind of, you kind of got to polish it and degrease and then, look for little patches with by misting water on it to see if you've got it all off um which is not an easy thing to do and at best you're going to end up polishing the car again and taking off clear coat that you didn't really want to so messing up a coating installation on a car is not a good thing to do <coughs> it can be quite easily done as well so there we've covered all of the different forms or most of the different forms of automotive protection and the key thing we've covered is that that's really all these products are really for paintwork. There are specific products for protecting your glass, although glass doesn't really benefit from protection. You know, 
people just say some people like the hydrophobic thing so the water runs off and you can see better for me i find them um a bit problematic um you can have protection for your alloys and ceramic coatings are definitely the best form of protection for alloys in my opinion um you know you could smother it in the barrel if I had the inside barrel of this refurbed, I'd smother loads of ceramic coating in there. I wouldn't care if I put in too much and there's a little high spot because the inside of that barrel gets blasted with brake dust and it's going to come off. The bit where you want to make sure it looks good is on the face. So, yeah, coatings for wheels are a good idea. Um, and that is the main thing on protection. There are protection products now for everything on cars, even like... The ceramic coatings for leather seats, the ceramic coatings for the plastic trim in the bonnets, the ceramic coatings for the wheels. I think there might even be ceramic coatings now for tyres. Um, so you've got all of this stuff and it's good. You know, I smile because not all of it's for me. I, mean, I think it might be a little bit over the top, putting the coating on a tyre or something like that. You know, but it's fun that the industry has all this stuff there. So if you're into it, you can try it. And if you're not into it, and you're a cynic well the good news is you could just take an old-fashioned product like this adam's buttery wax and just put it on the car however you like buff it and stand back and admire the shine um, <laughs> which is exactly what i'm going to be doing now so thanks for watching i'll see you soon don't forget to hit the subscribe button hope you enjoyed this video any questions put them in the comments take care bye for now Where was I when you